Um, um, Dad, where is it? Dad, wh where's, where's the lamb? I've got the wood. You've got the fire and the knife, but where's the lamb? Isaac had made it up to Mount Moriah with his father. And he had that question for him. Dad, where's the lamb for the sacrifice? We, we, we've come up here to, to worship, to offer a sacrifice. We've got everything but the lamb. Then Father Abraham said with the heart of faith, the Lord will provide. And so it was. And he did. God had answered that question thousands of years before the writer to the Hebrews wrote these words, but, but he knew that he had to remind those new Christians all about that sacrifice. They were familiar with it. They had known the concept. They had done this kind of worship for years. They had seen it over and over again. But, but they needed to be reminded how Jesus was greater. That he was different from, different from all the other priests. Oh, certainly, he's been the compassionate priest, and he's been the great priest, and he's been the perfect priest. And now today, he reminds you and me that, that he's the self-sacrificing priest. But does it jump out at you, too? When Jesus, speaking about these sacrifices, says, God didn't desire them. Really? Is, is Jesus right? God, God didn't desire this. Isn't it, isn't it true that they were required? And, and yes, they were. We, we, we know that the, the, the people that the writer to the Hebrews was writing to, they knew that. Some estimated that just the public sacrifices that they did in their public worship service totaled every year over 1,200. Every day. Two sacrifices, a morning and an evening sacrifice. On the Sabbath day, it doubled to four. At the beginning of every month, it increased four lambs, two bulls, a ram, seven male lambs, and a goat. And then on the special festival days, like, like the Passover, 11 more animals. Before the altar of the tabernacle, before the altar in the temple, blood flowed. God required sacrifice. Did you ever ask yourself why? Why this? Why, why was that the way God wanted them to worship? Why? Why sacrifice? Why animal sacrifice? Did you ever think, too, that if we would institute that kind of worship today, what groups in America would think? Why? Why sacrifices? Why blood? God wanted to paint the picture for them and for you and me what the Apostle Paul wrote. The wages of sin is death. Well, God through the Spirit said, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. He wanted you, he wanted them to see that sacrifice, to see the grotesqueness of it and think of your sin. He wanted you to see how ugly it is. 
He wanted you to see just how bad you are. And how good he is. That he would do anything. And as we'll see tonight, even give up his son for you. We see those required sacrifices and, and we see how bad we are, but how good our God is. But Jesus was right. God didn't desire their kind of sacrifice. Because the people of Israel, they, they had forgotten that purpose many times. They had looked at their, their sacrifices that they were bringing daily, that they would bring for their sin offerings, that they would bring for their thank offerings. They, they looked at it as, as a way for them to buy forgiveness, as a bribe that they could give to God to say to him, here, something from us to make you happy with us. And when they brought sacrifices like that, thinking that way, he did not want any of it. It's good for us that this Lenten season to remember that, right? God does not desire that. God does not want you coming in here today, tonight, thinking, well, God, I've already given you an hour or two on Sunday, and now look at me, how good I am. I give you another hour this week. He doesn't care for that kind of thing. He doesn't care for that kind of sacrifice. We could never give him anything that would make him happy. Happy enough to forgive our sins. And, and so God knew that that we could give him nothing, and so he found a sacrifice himself. Look at what Jesus said about himself. A body you prepared for me. Jesus knew that the Father did not accept any sacrifice that any human being could give, so he knew that's why he came. He's talking about Christmas. He's talking about the incarnation. He's talking about him as God taking on human flesh for one reason. That flesh would have blood. So he could shed it for you and die for you. He says, the Father, you've prepared a body for me. Because I am the answer to that question. Where's the lamb? The priests, they could not offer anything that would take away sins for good. And so Jesus, the great high priest, comes with an offering. He says, it's my body. The priests' sacrifice in the Old Testament, those sacrifices did nothing to take away sins. Would the sons? Would his sacrifice be enough? And would he be the acceptable sacrifice? It, it, it's something that the, the people of Israel, the, these Hebrew Christians, would have been familiar with too, with the old sacrificial system. They, they knew what it was like when they would bring a lamb to be sacrificed, that, that the priest would take a look at it and kind of be like the Westminster dog show, one of those judges. No, they, they'd get and they'd, they'd kind of pull up the ears and they'd check the teeth and they put their hands over the limbs to see if there were any imperfections. And Jesus says this, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He says to the Father, inspect me. See if I am the acceptable sacrifice. See if there's anything wrong with me. And we heard the Father's answer. As the Son was baptized, as he was transfigured on that mountain, this is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. 
He would be the acceptable sacrifice. Even Pilate on earth, an earthly judge, would recognize that. He said, I find no basis for your charges against him. He's perfect. Without blemish. Without defect. He is the acceptable sacrifice. When the Father inspects me, when he inspects you, well, last week I went in for my inspection. It was my annual doctor's visit a year late. I put it off for a year because I don't think I wanted some of the inspection results. I knew he'd take a look at my chart from two years ago and then take a look at the weight that the nurse had just put down. Well, Matt, put on a few pounds these last two years, right? And, oh, then, wait, let me say on this examination, this questionnaire, how, you said you exercise how many hours a week? And you have how many sugary drinks a week? Well, yeah, I wasn't looking forward to that examination. How much less so the one the Father gives me and gives you. He inspects you and sees you with plenty of blemishes and defects in body and in soul. And so he gives the lamb, his own lamb, his son, and promises to accept that sacrifice for you. We know it was accepted because of what Jesus does. He sets himself apart from all the other priests because their work was never done. The writer of the Hebrews says, Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. The, the priests, they were never done. Day after day, year after year, they stood and did their work. But when Jesus sacrificed himself, what did he do? But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. He sits down because his work is done. Because that's what we do when work is finished, right? We sit down because it's done. You know what that's like. I had a wonderful experience with that this summer. We went back to Wisconsin to, to visit my in-laws, and they had just moved into a, a new home. They hadn't had much time yet to get the landscaping done, and so the good son-in-law that I am, I'll do that for you, no problem. They had over six tons of mulch that needed to be put down. We got there in July in Wisconsin, 90 degrees, 90% 90 humidity, but it was finally done. And I found some shade and a chair and a cold Wisconsin beverage. And I sat down. Right now the father has his son sitting down next to him on the throne in heaven because his work is done. That is what Easter and Ascension are all about. The father says, I accept his sacrifice. There is no more need for sins to be paid for. I prove it, the consequence of sin has been taken away. Death cannot hold him. I raise him from the grave, and I sit him down because his work is done. The father looks at his sacrifice as being acceptable, and now he looks at you and me 
in the same way. I need not fear examining myself or having the Father examine me in my life because when he looks at me, when he looks at you, he sees his son. He sees his sacrifice. He no longer sees your ugly sin. It has been covered. He looks at you with robe of righteousness that you got at your baptism and says, you are my son, my daughter, and I'm pleased with you. That's what Easter and Ascension prove to us. You probably remember that this year, Ash Wednesday also had Valentine's Day sharing the same date. And, and whenever that happens, when Ash Wednesday falls on February 14th and Valentine's Day, if there isn't a leap year day, then Easter falls on what day? April 1st. But dear brothers and sisters, it is no joke. God is not fooling with us. The Son has been raised. Your sins have been forgiven. His acceptable sacrifice is for you. God grant it. Amen.